Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com, and as promised, my third video on the Blue Etty review would include some real-world camping. So I've set up here in an off-grid campground in British Columbia called Strathcona Provincial Park, and unfortunately I'm not going to get much sun this weekend, so it'll be a good test for it. I'm mostly drawing power out of the battery, as you can see. Even though I've decided to set up the solar panels, probably won't get much light because we're under a lot of trees here, but might as well put them out anyway, see how they perform in low light, and see if the, how they handle the rain, because uh, I hate when companies sell you solar panels you can't use actually outside in the rain. Anyway, let's go under and I'll show you what I've got set up here. Here's where I put the box. Now, I've got the actual whole RV plugged into it right now. I brought my cord from the front and with an adapter went to the, the 20 amp cord. So I'm not going to be around the air conditioner or anything. Highest wattage thing will be the microwave. So I started out at 100%. The box was fully charged. I've been here a little while. And you can see right now it's at 98%. The RV is drawing 95 watts. We're using a couple computers and stuff like that. You can see the actual solar panels are put bouncing around maybe 20 watts. Now I've separated my main battery bank from this. Um, I've turned off charging and uh, turned off the RV DC loads right here via this breaker. So basically my batteries aren't connected to the RV circuits. They are connected to this inverter but I'm not using it right now. Um, I'm letting my rooftop solar keep my, my main battery bank charged. See my rooftop solar is actually bringing in 45 watts. But it's a uh, rigid glass panels and I got about 940 watts up there. Anyway, this is kind of my fallback. If this box runs out, I can always fall back to this. And I've actually got it set up that I could turn on that 1000 watt inverter and through the power brick here, I could recharge this box off my other batteries. Anyway, that's kind of complex, but our main test is to see how long this box is going to last. And we're just going to use the RV as normal. I've switched the refrigerator and the water heater to gas power. So the main draw is probably going to be maybe the furnace overnight. We're going to use our big buddy heater during the day, so there won't be any, any draw from the furnace. Because actually, even though it's uh, June 6th today, it's not that warm out. We might hit maybe 10, 12 Celsius. So, you know, like 50, 50 to 60 Fahrenheit. And the nights probably get down maybe 5, 6 Celsius, maybe 40s Fahrenheit. So we might need the heater at night. And also has a small electric blanket she uses. Then we got our two computers. She's got an iMac and at night for entertainment we might watch a few shows on the iMac and she uses it for processing photos and then I have a little laptop that I use. And then we recharge our camera batteries and stuff. So we'll just see how it goes and I'll report back. Hopefully it'll last at least one day, maybe even more. We'll just have to see how she goes. Just wanted to check back now that Anne's got her iMac going and she's actually working on some photography, doing some editing and stuff, so it draws quite a bit of power through her computer. Also, I have my laptop fired up. And you can see it's bouncing around here, 155 watts, 143, 156. You can see it even go as high as 190 watts. So that's drawing quite a bit of juice right now. Unfortunately, we're putting in very little by the solar panels, about 5 watts. And you can see why. Quite wet today. But you know, on a normal uh, sunny day, if I had a nice clear sky, this thing would be putting in at least between four and 500 watts of solar, so this wouldn't be a problem at all. Okay guys, so it's the next morning now. Just about 8 o'clock in the morning and I found we were down, the box was down near 2%. So uh, we went the whole night there. At night you can see we're drawing around 70 watts for the RV to work. And then every once in a while the furnace was kicking on last night. 
Anyway, so it's around, I don't know, around 18, 19, 20 hours of powering the RV. So today what I decided to do is to turn on my inverter and I'm going to use some power out of these batteries just to simulate solar. So you can see in here I have 374 watts going in. Kind of just going to pretend I have a really good solar day today and let it charge. Yeah, you can see, probably not going to have much chance of getting any good solar today, even if I was to be able to bring the panels out here with the box. I wouldn't get very much with these thick clouds. So I think that's the best way to simulate the solar, just run it off the other batteries there. Just a quick demo of it doing a bunch of different things at once. So I'm charging this cell phone here off of one of the USBs, using the DC output to run a camera display. And then we have solar power coming in, charging here, and then we have a charge coming in through the power adapter as well. And then we have an AC load, and that's what the RV is plugged in, so you can see all the different things going on all at one time, and each thing you can push and get more information on. I showed that in my uh, my other demo test videos, but I thought I'd show you that it can be charging, discharging all at one time and running multiple devices. You can actually have all the ports going, which is a good feature. So the next test, it's 4.15 p.m. and the box is 100% charged. So this would simulate kind of the end of a solar day down in the southwest. The sun would be going down. We would have brought back all the charge into the box via solar panels. And now I'm going to spend the evening and come back in the morning around the time the sun would come out, say around 9 o'clock, and we'll see what percentage of the box that has been used in that time. <clears throat> now, this evening will be pretty typical. If we're in the southwest and it's kind of cold out and dark, we'd go into the, the RV and might do some photo processing. I might work on my computer and then we'd have dinner and later on um, maybe watch a few shows on, on her computer and then we'll go to bed and the furnace may run a bit. So kind of would be a typical uh, southwest midwinter night where uh, you're not going to get much solar charging or any type of charging between sundown around 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock and not until 9 the next morning. So kind of the, be the worst case scenario for this box. So I think it'll give you a good a good overview of what to expect in kind of the, the leanest times. And anywhere from that, you're going to have, you know, much, much longer days and shorter nights. So the box will perform even better. So we'll see in the morning around nine o'clock and we'll see how it did. So you're probably wondering what the heck kind of uh, power loads are you running that you're going to be drawing a constant 70 watts all the time. So I kind of sat down and went through all the things in the RV that might just be like drawing power, kind of parasitic power loads. Uh, first, because I'm running the converter charger, uh, there's losses in, in the converter charger that's converting the the AC back to DC power for me. Uh, the fridge control board, even though it's running on LP gas, there's a control board in there and there's also a cooling fan that comes on once in a while. Uh, there's the furnace control board. I believe it draws a little bit of power all the time too. There's our lights. Um, there's a stereo in here that has a backup power and it also has a backlight that you can't turn off. It runs all the time. Uh, there's a propane alarm and it's wired right to the 12 volt system, so it's always on. I do have a weather station as well that's wired into the 12 volt power line. Uh, I have an electric drain valve, a push button drain valve, and it draws very small power, but it does draw power. Uh, there's also a wireless remote controller board so that uh, you can uh, raise the jacks and open the awning and slides with, with remote control. 
but that's always getting some constant power into it. Uh, my surge protector that my AC cord runs through, it's going to have a little control board in it and it draws some power. Uh, the microwave, even though it's not, not on, it's got a little controller board in there and a clock and stuff that draws power. Uh, chargers that we've kind of left plugged in, like we have a dust buster and sometimes we'll just have chargers that are plugged into the wall. They, they, they leak a little bit of power as well. Uh, I have tank level meters and they draw a little bit of power. And then our computers, even though they're not on, they're in sleep mode. Um, so they're not totally shut off. So you start adding everything up, a little watt here, five watts there, three watts there, and pretty soon you can get up to quite a bit of a load. Now other RVs, if you have like a van and you don't have very many things on, be quite different. But I just wanted to do a, a real world, world demo of something like a, a larger fifth wheel trailer what goes on it and we're pretty moderate power users we're not power super power pigs by any measure but we're also not super meager like you know some people might just like to read books a lot and have one light on and stuff but no we like to use our computers and we like to watch some shows when it's dark out and yesterday with all the rain and stuff we had to spend quite a bit of time inside because it just wasn't nice to be outside so you know that kind of contributed to the extra power using. So I thought I'd show you the iMac I keep talking about. This is the, the iMac that Ann likes to process her photos on. She uses Lightroom and it draws quite a bit of power. When it's humming along it's drawing a good hundred watts. And then later in the evening usually we'll flip it around and lie down and watch some TV. There's a laptop I use. So it's a 17 inch laptop so it draws quite a bit of energy as well. Um, as far as heating the place we usually use the buddy heater. It doesn't draw much energy, well it draws no energy at all. Um, except in the evening when we go to sleep we turn that off because I don't like having an open flame. And then we use the RV furnace. And uh, it can draw a fair amount of energy. It won't draw too much. Probably later in the evening it'll draw maybe a 120 watts or something like that during the time that it's on. Okay, here we are next morning, almost nine o'clock. So we're down to 6%, so the box made it, but just barely. Uh, what did we do last night? Well, it poured rain from about supper time on. Um, Anne's iMac use was around five and a half, six hours. That's her 21 inch iMac that I showed you. Um, we also had some RV furnace run time last night because it cooled down quite a bit. Sometime after two, I heard it coming on and off. Um, of course, the LED lights in the rig, water pump, some brief microwave usage, maybe five minutes, and then the regular RV 12 volt constant loads that I, that I outlined before. So, kind of worst case scenario um, if you were in the southwest and it was going to be no solar for quite a long time, and uh, kind of moderate uses of uh, appliances and things. Well, surprise, surprise! The clouds parted and we got a little bit of patchy sunshine today. So I decided to set up the Blue Eddy solar panels here. So I got the 200 watt ones, three of them, so 600 watts of solar. Brought it out here. And I've also plugged it in via an extension cord, pretty heavy duty extension cord. And then that's adapted to my RV cord. So. We got power in the RV. Anne's able to use the microwave, heat up her milk for her latte. She's happy about that. So we'll see how it goes. I don't hold out a lot of hope that we can charge her up today, but we'll give her a try. Report back. See how much energy we can get back into that box. I was looking out here with the panels. Even when it was kind of cloudy, they were uh, putting in about a around 80 watts, 100 watts. So when the sun comes out, it should boost up to maybe 500 watts if we get direct sun on it. So we're getting some good sun right now. Looking at the screen, it's coming in well over 500 watts, 560, 70 watts, and over 10 amps sometimes. Probably because we're getting a bit of cloud flaring happening. Quite the wild clouds going on.
Got so much charging power going on. I actually heard the fan come on. I'll let you listen to it. This is the low speed. It's very quiet. You can barely hear it once you're a distance away. When the thing's drawing a lot of power, like over 1500 watts, that thing speeds up quite, quite a bit. Well, you could hear it turn off there. It gets fairly loud when you're drawing a pretty heavy load, but you're not really doing that too often. Overall, the fan noise isn't disturbing at all. It's quite muted. So with the OEM setup, you don't get a huge amount of wiring. That panel, as far as I can get it, is about 18 feet away from the box. Although you could add an extension to that fairly easily, as long as you used a fairly heavy gauge wire, I don't see a big problem. You probably wouldn't lose too much power because these are wired in series wiring. So you have a voltage of 60 volts, which limits the, the losses in the wire compared to a parallel setup of panels. Well, the morning hours are pretty good. I had a few good hours of sunshine there, but uh, pretty well the afternoon was a bust. It kind of was mostly cloudy. And just recently it started to rain pretty good. So I got back up to 74% altogether. I'm just going to give up now because it's getting pretty nasty and wet. Lots of squalls going through. The foldable Blue Eddy solar panels seem to handle the weather no problem. Uh, easy to clean up and put away. The only thing I did notice is I guess a little bit of the wetness, this writing didn't really like it. It's starting to peel back. That's about it. Okay, well I've done a lot of testing to this and I've taken it out and used it in the real world for several days, so I'm kind of back with my uh, review of it. Um, up front, disclaimer, they sent this out to me for free. Um, they didn't ask me to say anything specific, they just let me have editorial control, whatever I want to say about it, and also they didn't pay me any money for the videos or anything. I just got a, a free product sample. Anyway, let's start with the cons. Um, one big con to these units versus building yourself a regular kind of solar system for your RV with batteries in your RV is you're putting kind of all your eggs in one basket. Um, if anything goes wrong with the box that shuts it down, then you have no way to charge it and you also have no way to power things from that box. So you're kind of like trapped into fixing that box in a, in a more spread out system. Say your solar charger breaks while you still, you know, have other parts of your system working fine. <clears throat> so that's one drawback. Um, also, it's very heavy at 60 pounds. Um, I'm fairly strong, so I didn't find it a big problem for me, but I know a lot of people have bad backs or they're just not physically that strong or they're smaller. So 60 pounds can be quite hefty. For two people, it wouldn't be too bad because the handles are, are quite strong on the unit, so you can both grab a handle. Um, it's much more costly than a gas generator. Um, gas generator is going to run you get a pretty good one for maybe a third to a half the cost of this generator and of course a gas generator will keep working as long as you keep putting gas in it uh, one um, bug buggy boo is the display is super hard to read in bright light uh, I don't know what they can do about this but I know that uh, say for instance my Garmin GPS kind of has a matte finish display with a touch screen <clears throat> and it's much easier to read in in bright light so Maybe they could improve that or, or put something uh, on it, uh, a shade or something that you could use. Also, speaking of the display, if it's ever damaged in any way, um, you're pretty well screwed. You, you can't use the box because to turn the AC and the DC um, outputs on and off, you have to be able to touch that screen and turn it off and on. So if the display quits or gets damaged, something falls against it, um, and you're kind of SOL there, you're going to have to probably ship it back to the, the, the manufacturer to have it taken care of. Um, another one is the 2000 watt hours that they print on the front can be sort of misleading. You think, okay, I'm gonna get 2000 watt hours out of it, but actually that's the battery capacity. So like in my test where I, I ran the inverter, I got 1680 watt hours out of it. Just so you know that it's kind of, you know, they're gonna always advertise their, their top figure. 
Anyway, that's pretty well the cons I have for it. Uh, now let's get to what I feel are the pros. Uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's a, it seems to be a super robust inverter with a 4800 watt surge. And I was surprised it even ran my air conditioning unit. So it's quite a quality inverter in there. And it didn't seem to, to get too hot or anything. Uh, the fans on this unit are pretty good. I like that they have uh, different levels. There's For lower loads, there's no fan. And then there's a very quiet fan for mid mid uh, wattage loads. And then the high wattage loads, the fan does crank up a bit, but uh, that's necessary. Uh, the construction of the unit seems to be quite high quality. I love the fit and finish. It comes with the really nice looking cords. They feel good. Nothing seems to be very cheap about it. Another biggie for me is it has the lithium iron phosphate battery pack, which is uh, safer than the other battery packs. It's one of the safest chemistries of lithium out there. Um, it's what my Lion batteries are. It's what Battleborn batter batteries use. So very good. Uh, they probably that's why it's a little bit heavy because that that's usually a little heavier than the other types of chemistries. Not as much power packed into it. But it, one other benefit it has is it has a much longer lifespan. They're saying 3,500 plus charge cycles, and then you'll still have 80% capacity, which a lot of the other boxes, they're more like between five and 800 charge cycles. So that's a big thing if you're gonna have this for a long time. Uh, you don't want to be having the battery pack start to degrade on you prematurely. Uh, another nice feature is 700 watts of solar input, which is nice and high. And also it can take 35 to 150 volt panel voltage. So that means you can series your panels together and use a smaller wire and uh, get much, uh, much better uh, efficiency out of everything like that. So really like that. Uh, it can charge with both input ports. So you can have the, the solar charging and then you can have a charger or you can actually have two AC chargers hooked to it for a total of 1200 watts. So that'll charge that thing probably in under two hours if you really, really needed a quick charge. Uh, it has the 25 amp, 12 volt DC output, which is really nice. I think that, that's a probably a good thing for RVers uh, that want to use like air compressors and things or, or, or 12 volt things that draw more juice than a cigarette lighter socket can handle. Uh, also, you could probably set that up to maybe run a, a power distribution system in a like a van or something like that where you you could have that that powering all, all the different 12 volt outlets in your van or small camper. A uh, company seems to have good brand recognition. They did a few searches around and they seem to be getting pretty good reviews on there. Um, they get a lot of, a lot of five, four or five, over four star reviews in a lot of places. Uh, it can uh, charge and discharge at the same time, which a lot of these boxes do, but it's important to know that you can, you can actually be taking power out while you're putting power in. I think they call it pass through charging. Uh, de detailed information via the touchscreen display. So the one th good thing about the display is it, it goes right into the, a lot of detail about what's going on, all the current and wattage and uh, stuff like that, and even the fault code. So if something does go wrong or it shuts down, you can see, oh, okay, I overloaded this or I did that, and you'll know right away. Or if something ever did go wrong, at least you could tell the manufacturer what's going on, what fault code it's spitting out. Uh, it has a pretty small form factor giving the power that it has, um, you know, I say it was pretty hefty weight, but it's only 16 inches by 15 inches by 11 inches. So really not too big, smaller than, than most 2000 watt generate, gas generators out there. So I find it can, it can fit in my front compartment, my fifth wheel, or it even could fit into the side compartments, which are 15 and a half tall. So I could even squeeze it in there. Uh, I think the looks are pretty stylish. A uh, nice kind of muted blue colors, but uh, it doesn't stand out which is a good thing. I really don't want people to be walking by and go, oh, look what that guy's got and, and think about uh, walking away with it. So it's nice that it kind of blends in. And like I said before, the handles are really solid for lifting or you could use them to, to lock the thing up. It's pretty, it's pretty solid. And inside there, I think it's metal. So they'd, they'd have to get in there and really start cutting to, to steal it. Uh, lots of different output ports for multiple devices. Got six of the AC output ports. And then it's got the USB ports and, and various 12 volt ports. So that's pretty good. And it also has a, a two year warranty, which is double what a lot of these boxes are putting, putting on there. So that's pretty well the pros. Well, what are my final conclusions? So the AC200P, 
I think it would be a terrific unit as an off-grid power station for small RVs like vans or backup power for power outages. Um, you know, it's it's got no basically pollution coming out of it at all, non-polluting. Uh, for larger RVs, say like my 30-foot trailer or larger, it may do the job if the solar is really plentiful or if uh, your power needs are relatively meager. But if camping in the trees for days and under cloudy skies or with no solar, don't expect miracles. You would need to invest in a gas generator to recharge this box's batteries every once in a while. Um, with the extra charger that you can buy, you could put 1200 watts into it. So you, that could be added so that you could probably charge it in you know two hours or less with a gas generator if, if you needed to. But uh, keep in mind, I don't feel that this box is in any way gonna be your main power power station of the of the whole rv if you've got a larger rv and you plan to be you know watching satellite tv and using your microwave a lot and hot plates and and different things people like to have coffee makers and stuff it's just mainly the inverter is fine everything everything like that is good it's just it doesn't really have super high battery capacity it's kind of comparable to maybe you know around uh 150 amp hours of a, of a lithium battery so that's kind of on the on the, the meager side for larger RVs. Uh, the folding panels, they fold up quite compact for a 200 watt panel, not too heavy. Uh, they're easy to connect. I wish the included cable was a bit longer, but it's it's easy to add to with uh, the popular MC4 connectors out there. So, and uh, the harvest from the panels was pretty good. I was I was getting up near 550 watts or even more consistently in good sun. So, they seem to be uh, pretty efficient panels. Anyway, that's it. That's my review of the, the AC200P from Blue Eti. Um, I think I'm going to be using this, and I plan to take this uh, down south and use it for many months. And so I'll come back later on and give you a longer term review. And if anything goes wrong in any way with the box, I'll also update you. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching this video series, folks. Cheers, everyone.